Hey, what's up guys? Houston here. And for those of you just finding my YouTube channel, as always, welcome. Please remember to hit that subscribe button and that bell. And for those of you that's always supporting me and following me, as always, salute. Now, today's video is going to be an awesome video. At least I hope that you appreciate the video because today we're going to be talking about the best credit cards to increase credit score. Now, the reason that I actually picked this topic here is because I think if I break it down in terms of how to increase your credit score and then you go after the credit cards, I think you'll have a better chance of getting to that 720 or higher credit score, okay? And as always, I always ask you guys, please check in on your elderly, check in on those out in out in the community that may need some help, some support, even just a strong conversation, you know, and also check in on your single fathers as well as your single mothers, all right? And so I really appreciate for those of you that actually take action in order to bring this information to the community. That being said, now we're go talking about, again, the best credit cards to increase credit score. Now, here's some things that I really want you to understand, and they're pretty basic, but some people miss out on them. And one of the things, um, in terms of helping you get a higher credit score, is basic. It's that's to pay bills on time, right? That is, it's just that basic. And I, I, you know what? One of the things when I'm talking to a lot of uh, clients and stuff, the reason is they, it isn't that they have a money problem. It's just because of their scheduling. They may be working a whole lot and they don't have time to get around to it, or they may not have a support system in place to help them remind them, hey, pay your credit cards on time. So it isn't the lack of money. It's just in terms of just paying your credit cards on time. All right, so that's number one. Number two, let's talk about removing inquiries, okay? And, excuse me. Now, one of the things that I always tell you the fastest way to remove inquiries off of the credit report is to be able to call the, um, excuse me, it's been a long day, guys, so please forgive me. Um, you need to call the fraud department, okay? And communicating with the fraud department, even if you have to send in extra documentation and stuff, that will remove inquiries much faster than sending in a letter, okay? So that's what I would tell you to do. Call the fraud department and talk to them. Let them know that, hey, some of these inquiries, I never did business with these people, uh, or they may have pressured me into uh, impressing me into applying for something that I wasn't, I knew I wasn't financially ready to apply for. So being able to communicate with those um, fraud department people of the credit bureaus, that would get those inquiries removed sometimes within 24 hours, okay? So removing those inquiries, that's definitely going to help you boost your credit score. Now, here's another one. Make weekly payments. That's right. Making more frequent payments. This is something that also boosts the credit score. The reason why is because all the credit bureaus don't pick up the information and the data at the same time. Okay, and because they don't do that, that's the reason your credit scores are so off. Like one may be a 650 and one may be a, almost a 700, right? And you're like, hey, what's going on here? It's because of the credit bureaus, they're not all picking the information up at the so same time. So if you pay your, uh, it's two things that's happening. When you pay your uh, weekly payments, not only is it gonna affect your credit score, but it also gonna help you with your DTI, your debt to income ratio, okay? So that's the reason if you have the means, say that you had a $500 credit card, and say that you had to use that $500 credit card to buy some new tires for your car or something like that. Well, I would definitely encourage you 
uh, if you can, pay $100 a week or at least pay $125 up front and then maybe $25 to $50 the following week. That way you can get your DTI back down, excuse me, get your credit balance back down and your DTI, it goes back down as well, okay? So that's the reason that I'm encouraging you to do this, all right? Now, another one that you want to think about is doing a debt snowball. Now, many people have heard of this, and but some people don't understand the concept. But if you want to increase your credit score and jump it real fast, this is one of the fastest way, and it also builds momentum. Now, I'm not telling you to pay your credit cards off and cut them up. Do not do that, okay? Do not do that. You'll ruin your credit. OK, I'm not telling you to do that, but what I'm telling you in terms of the debt snowball, that's where you are taking your small bill and going up to the largest bill. So say that you have three bills. One is one hundred dollars. Another one's five hundred. Another one's thousand. You want to pay the hundred dollars one off first because now your DTI is going to jump because once you eliminate that bill, now your DTI uh goes down okay and also it bumps up and give you some credit credit uh, gives you a few points on your credit score okay so the debt snowball it does work especially for people that's um struggling to manage their credit cards and stuff there is other ways to pay down your debt some people said pay down the highest interest and in which i do agree with them however if you're trying to get motivated to pay down your debt so you can get better control of your money and stuff, I would tell you do the debt snowball at least till you get enough control over your money to where you can switch lanes and then start focusing on the highest interest credit card. Okay? So that's one thing that I would definitely tell you to do. Now, dispute errors this is very common there's a lot of people out there they what it, what it is here's the thing about it there's a lot of people out there that have inaccurate information on their credit files and here's one of the worst ways that the credit bureaus do this and they won't correct it unless you present it to them OK, so say that you may have a relative that had stayed with you at one time or another. Right. And because a creditor had sold that paper and you say that you and that relative may have close to Social Security numbers, but at the same address or you may have close to the names and stuff like that. Right. So the credit bureaus, when they get that uh, document from the collection agency and stuff, then whatever uh, name is there, that's the or whatever name that matches that file, that's where they're going to place it, right? Even though you may not have ever had anything to do with that creditor, okay? So that's the reason you should always take a look at your credit report to see if there's any errors, okay? And if you're disputing errors, I'll tell you a secret. If you're disputing errors, and you reach out to the credit bureaus, okay? And they don't, uh, they say it's verified or whatever, then what you need to do is follow up with the CFPB, okay? Now I'm gonna tell you more about increasing your credit score uh, later on in the video. Also, I got something that's definitely gonna help you guys, especially if you've been in check systems and you're trying to get a, a another car and stuff like that i have found a credit union that may can help you okay so stick with me because i think this is something that's really going to be beneficial to you all right now after that number six let's talk about becoming an authorized user now in terms of becoming an authorized user Again, this is something you have to be careful about, guys, because if somebody gets uh, just approved for a new credit card, say that your spouse gets a, a credit card, okay, and then they add you on as an authorized user, that's not going to help your credit because there's no history there. 
the account is too new, okay? Yes, you'll get the trade line, but in terms of actual what you need is the history in order to help you boost up your credit score. So that's the reason that you do not want to just add anybody's authorized users on your credit file. We also have clients that had uh, people that added them on as authorized users and the accounts got closed down and the authorized users were still reporting a negative on them. And so they would have to call the financial institutions and ask them, hey, remove me because I was only an authorized user. And once they remove you, if it's a negative account and you're an authorized user, once they remove you then you should see your credit score increase from that as well okay so it's just a few things that you need to understand on how to increase your credit score before you even start applying for more credit cards or loans or anything okay now here's another one this is what I was saying people don't close old accounts I don't care if it's six months old all right and you paid it off it's a positive trade line do not close it okay unless the financial institution you're dealing with close the account you do not close it I don't care if you paid it off you let them close it out okay because if you close it out it can impact your credit Okay, so you don't want to do that. It could lower your credit score. So never, ever close an account out, okay? You always want the creditor to stop the reporting, but not you. If the creditor stops the reporting, it will not affect your credit score. But if you request that they close it out or whatever, it's going to help hurt your credit score, okay? So you got to keep that in mind. All right. So, talking about secured cards. All secured cards are not created equal, okay? And I made a video and I was explaining you to you my formula in terms of when I'm going after a secured card, I want to see what else I can maximize with that financial institution instead of just a secured card, okay? Because there are plenty of secured cards out there, and yes, they do report to the credit bureaus. However, you want financial institutions so you can build a relationship because you want more than just a secured card. You want to be able to get loans as well as you may be looking at starting a business. So you want to be able to get access to business credit cards and business lines of credit as well so this is stuff that you really have to consider when you're applying for uh, credit cards and stuff like that especially secured card now I know some of you guys or a lot of you guys may say well I have a self lender and I have credit strong and stuff like that and which I'm not knocking it they are helpful however if you're really trying to build a relationship with financial institutions I would start with the banks and the credit unions instead of those third-party companies because, again, with those third-party companies like Self Lender Credit Store, they usually give you a very small amount. With some of your credit unions, and, uh, and again, I get it. Hey, if you don't have no money and that's where you need to start, I'm not knocking it. But if you have a little capital to work with, I would actually reach out to the credit unions and then the banks, okay, if I'm trying to get trade lines to help build up my credit, all right? Now, here's one that I want you all to understand, okay? And it's called the shopping cart trade, okay? And what it is, uh, I explained it in another video, what it is with the shopping cart trick, say that you, um, like Victoria's Secret, say that you're a woman or a man, you know, you say, hey, I want to get a trade line or whatever. So with uh, Saccone Bank and stuff like that, what happens is since they offer credit card, department store credit cards through for Victoria's Secret, right? So you putting stuff in the shopping cart, okay? And then you decide, well, I'm going to leave. 
So instead of you checking out to leave, they pop up and say, hey, you could apply and uh, get this here credit card. So what happens is that they'll do that. There won't be an inquiry on your credit and you get the trade line. However, keep this in mind. A department store cards, unless there's certain ones, they really don't help you unless they're like, uh, say, like um, may be a codes that that offers a Visa gift card. Department store cards like Home Depot. And I, I use that example a lot because it actually works. So Home Depot, Lowe's or whatever. But where you can actually use that Home Depot card, uh, get some Visa gift cards to help pay your bills or help start your business checking or personal checking account or stuff. That's the reason I'd say use department store cards. Those type of department store cards instead of like uh, Victoria's Secret and stuff. Like I'm saying, if you just want a trade line, there's nothing wrong with it. But in terms of, I always talk about strategy and leverage. And that's what I want you all to get used to. Looking at the strategy and how you can leverage the financial institutions that you're actually working with. Okay, so those are the nine things that I would tell you to consider first before applying for credit cards. Now, here's the thing. These credit cards that I'm going to put on the board, these credit cards all have pre-qualification. So that means there's no hard inquiry on your credit, okay? And that's a good thing because if you get the hard inquiry, it brings down your credit score, right? So these are credit cards that actually have no hard inquiry and potentially have a higher chance of being approved for, for some of them, okay? Even if you have challenging credit, all right? So now the first one, is deserve the deserve okay and so i'm not going to go through all the qualifications and stuff like that because i don't want to make it too lengthy because there's some other things i want to share with you but uh deserve and then you have uh patel patel two then you have avant card okay and all of these are credit cards that report to all the credit bureaus, all right? Now, I, I'm going to tell you about Apple Credit Card, okay, the Apple Card. And I did make a video actually explaining it and stuff. And in terms of they do have a prequal, okay? And they're through Goldman Sachs, a bank, right? And so having the Apple Card and they have Goldman Sachs, the bank, then you may see if... Uh, Goldman Sachs offers business accounts as well, all right? But Apple Card would be a good one if you're able to get qualified for it, okay? Now, and that's pre-approval. Chase, uh, they have certain cards that are pre-qual, and average credit score for Chase now, like I said, average credit score for them, because they're a banking institution, it's about, it's about a 660 credit score. OK, but again, you have to take into consideration of am I trying to just get a credit card or am I trying to build a relationship to where I can get more funding? OK, so like with these uh, here, these are just mainly just to get a credit card with uh, pre-approval. But when you come to Chase, you're trying to build a relationship. That means they don't have secured cards, but in terms of if you have at least a 660 credit score, you may can get a credit card from them. But again, they offer the pre-qualification, all right? Now, Bank of America, they offer, offer the same. So bo both are offers the same, uh, offers pre-qual. Then you have Discover. Now, here's the thing about Discover that I want you all to understand. Discover, they have student credit cards, okay? They have student credit cards and they have secured cards too, okay? So you may uh, wanna try to see if you get a student credit card. It may be a low limit, but it's a 
primary trade line on your credit and it's with a strong financial institution. So that's the reason that I have discovered here because of the potential that you may, um, even with a lower credit score or no credit, you can get a student credit card, okay? Or at least a secured card, depends on how thin your file is or how chopped up your file is, okay? So that's the reason that Discover is on here. Now, you also have Capital One. Now with Capital One, again, they have credit cards. They try to make it very easy for you to get approved for credit cards. And here's the thing about Capital One. If you had a Capital One that's been charged off and it's over a year old, you could possibly get another credit card with them. But the charge off a uh, Capital One card, it has to be over a year old in order for them to consider you to give you another card, okay? But again, it's about the relationship. So that's the reason if I was going after Capital One, I would probably open up a personal account, a business account, a secured card, if I don't qualify for a regular credit card. And again, with Capital One, um, if you're in the low 600s, you possibly can get approved for a credit card, all right? So that's the reason that Capital One is here. Again, we don't want to waste inquiries, and all of these are pre-qualifications. -quali Okay, so that way you're not going to get that hard inquiry and you'll find out if this is the card for me, for you, or if I can actually build a relationship with that financial institution. All right. Now here's one that a lot of people love and I understand Navy Fed. All right. Now people know, and it's true that if you're a member of Navy Federal, of course, in order to become a mem member, you uh, either have to be a um, Navy Federal uh, member or a family member. I also pointed out some other ways to possibly join Navy Federal. So for those of you that's watching this video, just put a comment below and I will send you that video for you to take a look at it to see if you pick up some strategies that way to try to join Navy Federal, okay? So just put a comment below to say, hey Houston, do you mind sharing that Navy Federal video with me? And I'll send you that Navy Federal video, okay? Now Navy Federal, like I said, again, people have been getting uh, twenty-five thousand dollar credit credit cards, and they only had like a five eighty credit score. So I'll um, put that uh, video up up so you can actually see it as well. So you can actually see and read the comments. A lot of people are in the five hundreds, and they're getting ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five thousand dollar credit cards, and where Navy Federal had turned them down. But of course, following the strategies in my video, people actually have been getting approved, okay? So again, I'll put that video there so you can actually see it as well. Now, here's some credit unions I wanted to share with you. And there's a reason that I wanna share these credit unions with you is because if you're in check systems, okay, and you're trying to find financial institutions to give you a second chance with a loan, with a credit card, or a car loan, or something like that, well, these here uh, credit unions are definitely places that you want to check out, okay? And the first one is my CCCU. And so what that stands for is Christian community. So it's Christian, excuse me, I know I'm messing it up. Christian community credit union, okay? Now, reason that, again, the reason they're here is because if you're in check systems, they offer fresh start loans, okay? They offer fresh start accounts. So they're trying to give you that fresh start you need. 
to start to rebuild your credit and everything. So for those of you, again, that's been struggling, trying to find the right financial institution to help you to not to help you to restart with giving you a second chance on checking account or give you a second chance on loans and stuff, you have your uh, Christian Community Credit Union. Also, they offer business bank accounts, okay? So again, looking at financial institutions that you can actually leverage to build a relationship so that you can position yourself to get more funding as you rebuild your credit, all right? So that's the reason that Christian um, Community uh, Credit Union is here. And it's my CCCU, I think it's .org, uh, if, if I'm correct. But it's Christian Community Credit Union, okay? Now here's another one. It's called um, U.S. Alliance. U.S. Alliance. Again, financial, U.S. Alliance Financial. Excuse me. Now again, same situation. It, they're a financial institute that's actually giving people a second chance to restart up to uh, get out of check systems, to start new credit cards and stuff like that. That's why um, this financial institution is on this list, okay? Now, here's another one, our credit union. And if you guys have heard of some of these credit unions, uh, let me know. Let me know. Let me know if you've joined some of these credit unions or if you, um, have any other credit unions or financial institutions that offer a second chance? Like I know Wells Fargo Bank and stuff uh, offer a second chance and stuff like that. But at the same time, this is information, again, we want to share with the community because we're trying to help rebuild the community, right? So that's the reason that I'm asking for your input. If I'm doing a good job, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. I ask you to share the video and everything because I really, I'm really trying my best to help the community, right? So another one, and this is the final one. And guys, when I came across this credit union, I, I thought they were joking around. But if you are in check systems, if you're having a problem trying to get a car loan, if you trying to if you're having a problem trying to get a loan this here credit union i would definitely check it out okay and they're in the state of georgia okay it's called peach state credit union okay and they're helping people, offering them auto loans, regardless of their credit. That's what they say, okay? So if any of you all are members of Peach State Credit Union, or have joined them, or you're familiar with them, put a comment, let me know, what do you think about them? Have you checked out their auto program? Again, they are saying that they're not focusing on the credit when it comes to auto loans. Right. So they're trying to give you a second chance to help get you into an automobile. But again, they're also offering the fresh start loans. All right. So let me know. Give me a comment. Let me know. What do you think about this video? Was this video helpful for you? Do you think this video can actually help the community? So this is Houston with three way funding. I appreciate you guys always following. And for those of you that's always supporting me as always salute.